when we spoke back in April, you talked about the fitness level of players and how you're really going to be able to test, see these guys, because even though you won't be seeing them on a daily basis, you'll be able to see, you know, how pro these guys are for being able to maintain this with all this uncertainty. So now that you've had a few days and you obviously had some testing over the weekend, what were your impressions like of the players overall? Pretty good. The, the only difference is uh, uh, some of our guys haven't skated since December, um, but it's it's been pretty uh, pretty impressive. Uh, when I think about uh, when I, the people I was referring to were uh, guys uh, that were coming to the Jets camp, and uh, whenever that would uh, that would uh, start, and um, guys like Logan Stanley really stood out to me. There was a a change in in. Uh, in his conditioning, and we could see it with the results. Uh, Nelson Nogio was in amazing shape. He still is, always spin, but you could see that he took advantage of that time. So most of our guys, I would say, um, that they took advantage of the situation. For us, it's it's a little bit harder. I still didn't get the results. That, that takes a few days to uh, gather the, the data and to compare from the previous years if we have any data on the on the on the players in the from the past. Um, but the eye test on the ice is pretty good. Um, they're they're pushing hard. We skated them hard yesterday. It was uh, even though just uh, ten skaters, two goalies, we we took. Um, uh, we pushed them hard, and today again, and they responded well. They were able to last uh, from uh, start to till the end. So so far, it's been pretty good. Next, we'll go to Mike Sawatsky. Go ahead, Mike. Pascal, uh, what does your eye test tell you about Declan Chisholm? Uh, what do you see there? What are you expecting? Well, we saw him with the Jets. And we could see he's a year older, and it makes a difference. Sometimes uh, just one year, you can tell. He goes from um, a junior player to a, a guy that is closer to play at the pro level. And, and uh, I, I really think so far he's been taking a step, but not so much. Like We know he's got skills, and, and he can move the puck, and he's got quick feet, very agile, change, uh, changing of directions on the ice, being able to uh, elude uh, four checkers uh, when he first touch the, touches the puck. Um, so we know all of that, but now his stick is a little bit better. He's, he's a little bit stronger. He's able to uh, contain players one-on-one. -on -one. So it's, uh, I see a guy that uh, took the summer really seriously um, to train. And we can see it on the ice, and he's asking good questions. He's uh, he wants to learn the systems now. He's uh, he's he's trying to execute what uh, we talked about. So uh, it's very positive. I am really impressed with um, Chis Chisholm's uh, camp so far. Next, we'll go to Jacob Stoller. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Pascal. Uh, I asked you about Cole Perfetti yesterday and uh, just the situation with him here on somewhat of a temporary basis. And I did some digging in. You know, last year, uh, he gets 62 primary points at even strength out of 111. And that marker was, you know, by, above and beyond the highest of any OHL draft eligible player. But also, his 1.01 even strength primary points per game is the fourth highest in the last decade. He's above names like Tyler Sagan, Andre Sechnikov. What do you say to the notion that perhaps, you know, in a perfect world, Perfetti would be here anyways, as there may not be much more for him to do at junior level? Um, I'd be careful there. I think uh, for him, um, yes, the numbers are great, um, but um, being able to play on a top line and play heavy minutes and be relied upon and, and uh, carrying that pressure of being the guy, that's, that's, that's an experience that uh, can uh, build confidence for a very long time. So above and beyond the points, um, if, and then, the reason why I'm saying we need to be careful, it's it's because of the physical strength of the players in, in the two leagues are, are completely different. There's a, here we have men and in junior they're they're strong young men, but they're still not there yet. So there's a, there's a difference there. And, and uh, uh, the numbers at the junior level are a great indication of what he can do on the ice. He's uh, again, today we could see he can make plays. He sees plays. He's able to, uh, protect the puck, even though he's small. He's a smaller guy, so there's for sure there's parts of his games are really, really good. 
but it's going to take a little bit of time to to build um, his strength and, and become as strong as he can be. Um, having said that, uh, we can see the potential. So um, I truly believe that um, not burning any steps, if, if, if for some reason the OHL play, uh, plays and, and he can go back and that's what we want and we feel that's the best way to go, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Um, and if he's here, we'll find him. We'll find him uh, some ice time to make sure he's uh, he's put in a situation to succeed, but not at any cost to lose his confidence. So um, that's that's something we'll have to adjust on a daily basis. But we're I'm very excited about the, his potential. He's I spoke to him today, uh, just as an example. I spoke to him uh, about just one thing that that he did in the neutral zone, working on zone entries, and and the very next time he did it right. So you don't need to talk to him very often. He, he gets it. He gets the game and he's going to be really good. Next, we'll go to Austin Siragusa. Go ahead, Austin. Thanks, Jen. Hey, Coach. Uh, Christian Reichel, I mean, he had an incredible second half of the season last year. Um, also signed a contract with Winnipeg Jets this offseason and then got a chance to participate in Jets camp and, um, you know, had a pretty solid camp up there with the Jets. So in these early stages of Moose camp, what have you seen from Christian's development and um, I guess what's impressed you so far from his play? Well, Reichs um, doesn't surprise me anymore. Uh, we know him. He's a, he, he goes all out every time, every shift, every game, every practices, every drills, everything that he does, it's 100%. And, and there's no stopping. It's, he's, it's just that's the way he's built. That's the way he's wired. And that's that's why he's uh, he's gonna play pro hockey for a long time. I don't know. I still don't know his ceiling because uh, he gets better every year. He's so mature um, as a person, as a hockey player. He's uh, he understand understands what needs to be done. Uh, so um, I'm I, I'm always impressed with with Christian. Every every year he gets a little bit better. He gets a little bit stronger. So and this year I was expecting. I, I guess my expectations are pretty high for him um, because I, I've seen him in the past. So he had a good camp. He was given a chance to uh, play and practice and then go against the big boys and he did very well and, and not only that I knew about him and I can speak to Paul and the coaching staff about Reichs but for them to see him on the ice with them and competing against the wheelers and the shite plays and all those guys all of those guys and being able to hold his own um, they, they saw it now it's just not my word so um, Reichs is, is doing all the right things and, and for that reason he's not a, only going to be a good player but he's also a good leader for us. Go next to Mike Sawatsky. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, so just to follow up on, on Chisholm and, and, and some of the other young D, how concerned are you about the time between games, for especially for these young guys, and, and how do you help them adapt to the AHL sort of quickly? Is that, uh, is that possible? Uh, what do you mean in between games? Well, they haven't played – played games probably eight, nine months, I would think, in most yeah. cases. Uh, um, how, how much of a, a problem is that, is what I'm wondering. Well, it would be a bigger problem if nobody, and some players uh, or some teams that played, but we're all, um, we're all facing the same problems. Uh, nobody has played. So there's going to be young teams on other teams as well, young players on other teams as well. Um, so I'm not, I'm not uh, too concerned about it. Uh, and, and frankly, uh, I think having 10, 12 players on the ice right now is helping the, the Chisholms and those guys, the young players, because we, uh, we can almost private coach those guys. We, we, it's, it's private teaching uh, to a certain degree. So uh, we work on components of the games and we try to put them in positions or situations of, uh, that would look like uh, games. Obviously, it's not games, but um, I'm, I'm not I'm not too concerned about that. Mistakes will be done. It's a games of mistakes, uh, and there's a uh, th there's some development that needs to be done. Um, only and you can only develop those those things in the games. But as far as um, understanding what needs to uh, be achieved and, and the development uh, curve, I, I'm not too concerned about it. Thanks. We'll go next to Jacob Stoller. Go ahead, Jacob. 
Hey, Pascal, uh, just one more thing about Cole here. Uh, in the past, obviously, you've always preached versatility, whether it's Jack Rozovic or, you know, other guys that are maybe brought up as a center, you want them to be able to play wing or vice versa. Um, just with Cole in particular, how, how exactly do you, if you've given thought at all, plan on um, kind of stre- like of developing both sides of his game? And uh, further to that, do you think it's important to develop one really strongly first, say w- wing or center, or do you think it's important to learn how to play each of the pro level simultaneously? So we'll adjust. The real answer is what I'd like to do in perfect, perfect scenario would be, would be for me, we're going to, we're going to introduce the center man, center man position first and live with um, the consequences, uh, but we'll adjust. We'll see how it's going to go. Uh, when, we have more players here at camp. Uh, we'll see what it's going to look like. So we'll, we'll, we'll adapt and we'll make sure we put him in the right position. But if, if we can, um, I, I think I'm going to try to start him as a centerman. Uh, so he learns that, uh, that role and, and what is expected from, from the Jets and the Moose um, and, and give him a real good uh, teaching. Well, we're we're going to do a lot of video with him as far as what, what it takes to be a centerman for the, this organization and the routes and, and understanding our systems um, and then uh, play him on the wing if, if we need to. Um, but that's, you know, in Jack's case, um, it was almost a full year as a center, then a full year pretty much as a winger. Um, it takes some time, so we're going to be patient, and, and we'll see. But we will adapt uh, depending on how he responds. We'll finish it off with uh, Dave Manuk. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, thanks, Jan. Uh, as coach, you know, one thing I was thinking about is sometimes players get opportunity with injury, but now because of the taxi squad, players are going to have, young players specifically, are going to have probably more opportunity to play games. Thinking of like Luke Green, Johnny Kovacevic, uh, Leon Galanke. So what kind of opportunity are those guys going to have and how good will it be for their development if they get now with this opportunity early in the season to get games under their belt? Well, I think it's great. Um, if they compete and then we're going to, we're, we're going to have, um, so it's a different year. We don't know if we don't, we still don't know how many games we're going to play. We still don't know uh, if there's going to be any playoffs. So it's the mindset is completely different, but we're going to create um, job descriptions that are probably a little bit more uh, in depth with those guys. And, and we're going to create some kind of goals that we have in place for those players that they can achieve. So we can, measure the development and uh, for, for young players having a chance to play that's that's what they want they want a chance to play uh, so they're going to be put in a position to succeed and if they don't then we'll adjust uh, adjust the, the course of, of development or or the expectations but it's uh, obviously this is a special year and and some guys will take advantage of it some won't um, but we're gonna we're gonna give it uh, give everybody a chance a fair chance to uh, show what they can do